Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Jazz is Essentials. This is a series where we talk about songs, artists, and events that gave rise to the music we know and love, jazz. I'm Matt Micucci, online editor of Jazz is, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about a controversial moment in the history of jazz. The controversy sparked by Lenny Tristano's self-titled album released in 1956. Now, Lenny Tristano is a remarkable figure in the history of jazz. He became totally blind as a child, but by age 12, he was already playing piano in taverns, and he would, of course, become a major figure of cool jazz, but also a deeply influential jazz teacher. In fact, he's regarded as one of the first people to teach jazz and improvisation in a structured way. Elements of his music included contrapuntal interaction of instruments, harmonic flexibility, and rhythmic complexity. Despite detractors who accused his music of lacking warmth and emotion, his style influenced countless artists, including Miles Davis, Charles Mingus, Dave Brubeck, and Anthony Braxton, to name but a very few. A landmark moment in his career came in 1956 with the release of a self-titled album. This was his first LP for Atlantic Records, and the label had allowed him complete control over the recording process and final product. Lenny Tristano, the album, uh, had been recorded the previous year, and it's essentially split into two parts. The first part consists of original compositions by Tristano, recorded at his home studio, and two of those tracks are solo piano pieces, meaning that he's the only one playing them. And the second part consists of live music, live versions of standards performed with a quartet and recorded at a restaurant in New York City. But it was the first part that got people talking. And here is why. It was because of its extended use of studio techniques, namely overdubbing and tape speed manipulation. Turkish Mambo, for example, one of the tracks of the album, was constructed out of four different piano parts played in different meters and recorded over a snare track. While the pianist did not reveal any of these recording techniques upon the album's release, critics and fellow musicians soon caught on and, as mentioned, many of them deemed them controversial. But what was it about these methods that made them so controversial? Well, they were recognized as blurring the line between composition and improvisation. But at the same time, they also raised issues around autonomy and authenticity. Essentially, people who were critical of these methods accused Tristano of cheating and also maintained that a recording should only document real-time performances. Tristano responded to such accusations by explaining that for him... The music was all that mattered. But this was not enough to quieten the masses, and when Atlantic Records did release his next album several years later, in 1962, the cover of The New Lenny Tristano contained the words Lenny Tristano is heard on this LP in unaccompanied piano solos. No use is made of multi-tracking, overdubbing, or tape speeding on any selection. And it's almost funny to look back on this controversy when a little more than a decade later, such authenticity concerns would seem relatively trivial as new technologies allowed artists to create ambitious soundscapes and effects in music. In jazz, Miles Davis's albums with Tio Macero perfectly represent that techniques pioneered by Lenny Tristano moved from apparent inauthenticity to a normative position. As Max Harrison noted in 1968 of Tristano's early experiments, the resulting music is surely superb enough to justify any help received from the studio engineers. If you have any opinions on this landmark recording, I'd love to hear them. So please leave a comment in the section below. And also, if you like the video, consider liking it, sharing it and subscribing to our channel. I also urge you to check out jazzes.com, our regularly updated website with lots of great content on jazz. And I urge you to join me next week 
as we continue to explore stories about songs, artists, and events that gave rise to the music we know and love, jazz. But till the next time, stay healthy, stay safe, stay strong.